Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise God. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Amen. Wonderful song. Praise the Lord. All right. So this morning, since we are singing our hearts out for the Lord, we will continue singing. For this morning, we will be talking about Blessed Assurance. One of the favorite songs of Brother Jerry and me. Blessed Assurance. Okay. Good morning, church. Good morning. All right. Well, Blessed Assurance is the uh, one of the uh, uh, top ten hymns of all time. Did you know that? One of the most uh, loved um, praise and worship songs. And uh, this was written by a blind singer. Um, her name is, uh, or the name is Fanny Crosby. Okay. Um, Fan, Fanny Crosby, um, he penned the words of these, uh, one of the famous hymn, Blessed Assurance, uh, when he was listening to a melody composed by P.B. Knopp way, way back. Okay. Way, way back when uh, nobody uh, was born yet in this congregation in the 1800s. And uh, so this morning we will be talking about Blessed Assurance. And uh, in that song, in the chorus, this is my story. So this morning, I will be talking about my story. <laughs> First of all, I would like to thank the Lord for, you know what? I've been here for two years. For two years. October. This is my second year. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And um, at first, my thought was, will I make it um, one year? <laughs> and then after one year, will I make it two years? Now two years, will I make it three years? But you know what? You're making my life easy because you are a real family um, in the Lord. So I thank God for all of you for making my life easy and uh, being a wonderful brother and brothers and sisters in the Lord. And for God, for that, I'm so blessed to be here. I'm so blessed by the Lord. And um, yeah, the, uh, the ministry back home is still uh, continuing, you know, and for that, I'm praising the Lord every day of my life. So this morning, this is my story. Based on, we will be going through the song, Blessed Assurance. Um, I am a very emotional person and uh, a very sentimental at that, you know. Um, I noticed that when I was probably seven or eight years old so I've noticed that uh, I'm not well I'm your typical kid I'm a typical kid growing up um, like my kids my age I would love to I love to play you know kid stuff love to watch cartoons you know all those things but I've noticed that um, I had this uh, knock on listening to uh, call this the classical music. I had this um, cassette tapes okay, when I was young, um, uh, composed by probably you know some of this um, Clementi, uh, Mozart, uh, Beethoven. Uh, Bach, you know, Sebastian Bach and all, all those names. So growing up, I was listening to their 
uh, composition. And it was really a, uh, a music to me. Although I don't understand <laughs> really classical music back then, but I fell in love with it. And um, also I was into listening to all these but goodies songs from the 50s, 60s, 70s. And uh, I, I still remember when uh, one of my one of our my siblings, I remember um, whenever you would hear a song, an old song playing in the house, that would be Mike playing. That would be Mike listening to that old song. And whenever you hear classical music in in the one of the room in our room, you know that would be Mike playing classical music. That would be Mike listening to classical music. And um, at an early age, I fell in love watching drama, drama movies, drama films, love movies, you know. I fell in love watching those uh, heavy drama. And uh, uh, none, of my, none of my playmates you know, would come to our house and watch those movies with me because they want to watch cartoons. And none of my playmates at that time wanted to uh, to hear classical music, you know, so they want to to hear kids music and there was one time um, I was really crying from watching this particular movie. I forgot this movie, but anyway, so I was I was crying and then uh, I went to our room and uh, we in our room we had this one big rectangular mirror attached to the wall, right? So I was crying and then I went to our room and then I stood right into that mirror and I watched myself crying. <laughs> because I want to see, <laughs> I want to see if how I look like when I'm crying. You know? But lo and behold, I'm still handsome when I cry. <laughs> and I think my sister uh, knew that story. <laughs> I, well, I'm the only in our siblings who, who did that, <laughs> crying in front of a mirror. <laughs> now, um, why am I saying all of these things? I'm saying this because at a young age, I developed a sense of connection with love, with, with life, sorry, with life, through those things, through watching uh, heavy drama, watching uh, the emotions of those people, watching uh, uh, and listening to those uh, music. You know. Because I found out that the, the uh, those all this but good is music. They have really wonderful uh, lyrics, you know, those love songs. You know. So at an early age, I developed that uh, that connection with love, and that got me thinking about the brevity of life, the shortness of life. So at a young age, I started to to ask myself somehow there's more to this life. And I was probably around 11, 10, when I was trying to connect myself with life. And I'm trying to find out what's my reason of being in this world, being created by God in this world. And uh, I wanted to find out more, you know, but at that time, being so young, I don't know the answer, and I don't know where to start looking. And there was a time when I was <laughs> watching uh, this film all by myself, and tears started to roll down my cheeks. And I said to myself, while I was crying, I said to myself, I don't want to die. <laughs> I don't want to die. You know? Yeah. The thought of dying came to me when I was young. 
That's why I started to find out, I started to look for some of the answers I had in my mind about life. Where would I go after this life? So I was asking those, those kind of questions. You know? Now looking back to all those things, you know what, I thank God for, for that, for the emotions, for the sentiments, for the, the love songs, the all this but good this song, the classical music, because it connected me to life. And I started to question my existence. And uh, you know what? When I heard the good news for the very first time when I was 12 years old, I was starting to find the answer to my questions. And after a few months of studying with the brethren, I found the answer to what I was searching for. And the answer was Jesus. I found Jesus to all the answers that I was um, trying to, to question and trying to find out about life. And uh, I found out that Jesus was, was that something more to this life that I was trying to search. You know, at that time, I was really looking at what's more, what's more important to this life. And I found out that Jesus is that more important to this life. And there is something more to this life. And uh, at the age 13, I accepted Jesus Christ and I was baptized into Christ when I was 13 years old. And my emotions, it played a crucial part in my search for the truth. It played a crucial part in accepting Jesus Christ. My emotions, uh, it played a role in my search and in my acceptance to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I remember just like what happened during the Pentecost, when the people heard the good news, when the people heard about Jesus Christ, what happened to Jesus Christ when Peter and the apostles stood right before them and told them about Jesus Christ. You know, what happened to these people in Acts 2.37, when they heard this, they were what? They were cut to the heart. They were pierced to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Okay. They felt remorse. There was an outpouring of emotions because they understood their predicament if they would not heed to the gospel message of salvation. They learned that they would die in their sins if they will not heed to the message that was brought to them by Peter and the apostles. So they were pricked to the heart. They were cut to the heart. And their emotions played an important role. And uh, if only people would put their emotions, if only people would really try to understand when they hear about the gospel, if they would only hear, not with their ears, but with, with their heart, and they would put their, their understanding to the message of salvation being brought to them by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, probably they would be one of those like those in the Pentecost where 3,000 souls were saved because they were cut to the heart. You see, our emotions will play an important part in our search for the truth. And you know what? I've noticed that people will come to their emotions. People would come to God when there's nothing left for them to do. Right? People would call upon God. Why? Because there, there are so much, there's, there's so much emotional stress. They cannot do anything. So emotions it's, it's playing an important role in their thinking, in their search for, 
What if I die? So looking back at my emotions during when I was growing up, I thank the Lord for that. Because of that emotions, because of that connection to life, I found real life in Jesus Christ. I want to live more. I want to live more, not for myself, but for other people. Not for myself, but for my family. Not for myself, but for my siblings. Not for myself, but for my friends. Why? Because I want them to have what I have. I want them to have what we have, what you have. And that is the hope of salvation. And that is Jesus Christ. That's why I want to live more. Every day I pray to God, Lord, give me one more day. One more day. Because I want to live more. Because I want to share the gospel more. Just like what we sang a while ago. See. We should be preaching the gospel. We should be bringing the gospel to people. And that should motivate you to live every day. So that people through you would come to know Jesus Christ. Now so again, if people would just have that emotional connection to life, to the realities of hell, to the realities of heaven, they would probably come to their senses and probably ask the same question that I asked when I was 10, 11 years old. See? So emotions has played an important role in me growing up. And we should be thanking God every day that we are alive and we should be using our lives to preach the gospel because that's why, that's what we are here for. That is the great commission. And I want to, want to give the Lord to them to have that blessed assurance like what you and I have. Assurance, a positive promise or pledge or guarantee to be certain and confident, free from doubt, blessed, happy, highly favored. It is an inner state of well-being. Blessed assurance is therefore and questionable certainty of happiness. That is the basic meaning of blessed assurance. Why? Why it is unquestionable certainty of happiness? Because Jesus is mine. Amen. It is a blessed assurance because you have the life. Jesus is yours. Jesus is mine. In our scripture reading, give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me for my father has given them to me and he is more powerful than anyone else. No one can snatch them from the father's hand. It is a blessed assurance. When you have Jesus Christ in your life, it's a blessed assurance. It is an unquestionable certainty of happiness. For sure, 100%, you will have that happiness. You will have that inner state of well-being because you have Jesus Christ. Amen to that. Now, with my emotions, at a young age, I was able to see the beauty of life. I was able to see not only the beauty of life here, but the beauty of life walking with Jesus. And not only the beauty of life walking with Jesus, I saw the beauty of my life in the afterlife. In Revelation chapter 21, I've learned that in the afterlife, he will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. How wonderful is that? No more pain, no more, no more tear from their eyes, no more me crying, I don't want to die. See, in verse 18, the wall was made of jasper and the city was pure gold, as clear as glass. In verse 21, the 12 gates were made 
of pearls, each gate from a single pearl, and the main street was pure gold, as clear as glass. Verse 23, and the city has no need of sun or moon, for the glory of God illuminates the city, and the Lamb is its light. What is that? Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. See, the Bible gives us a glimpse of what lies ahead, a foretaste for all of you faithful. See, now some argue that these are just, you know, symbolic and it's not real, you know. It's not real that we will be walking on the streets of gold. Now, just for a moment, let us assume that it is not. But still, I would rather prefer to go to heaven than to go to hell. Right? Because God is there. And all the saints is there and you will be there. One of the greatest lessons I learned in studying the scripture was I was not a son of God. You heard me right. When I started to when I started to study the scripture with the brethren, I learned that I was not a son of God. All the time I thought I was. Growing up, I was fed this thought that I was a son of God. But lo and behold, I was wrong. And I was shocked to learn that I was not the son of God. Well, probably some of you here are also, hmm, why? Let me tell you, in Galatians chapter 3, it tells us, For you are all sons of God, through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. We are all created by God, but we are not all sons of God. I found that out when I started to read the Bible. And when I started to study the Bible, the scriptures tells us so. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Now, there is a qualification for being sons of God. Of course, daughters of God included. And that is by having faith in Jesus Christ. Now in verse 27, it tells us how we put on Christ. Through what? Through baptism. Now the faith Paul was talking about is an obedient faith. And obedient faith calls for following the gospel. Now when I read this, I was like, whoa, wait a minute. I am not a son of God. Because... I was living in my sins, and I don't have real faith in Jesus Christ. I was wrong. Now also, Paul made specifics in his letter in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 17 and 18. Therefore, come out from among unbelievers and separate yourselves from them, says the Lord. Don't touch their filthy things, and I will welcome you. Notice in verse 18. And I will be your what? I will be your father. And you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. You see, how to become sons and daughters of God? Now, Paul's narrative here was that believers are the temple of the living God. And therefore should not defile themselves nor touch something that would defile themselves. And a distinction was made here by Paul, by those unbelievers and the believers. Paul was telling the believers, you separate yourself. Separate means make yourself holy. Separate means sanctify yourself. Believers, we are holy and we don't touch and we don't do things that are contrary to God. We don't defile ourselves. So Paul told the Corinthian brethren to separate yourself from the unbelievers so that what? Verse 18, 
I will be your father, the Lord said, and you will be my sons and daughters. Now then I learned in my study that I would become son of God through faith, genuine faith, not a fake faith, and being baptized into Christ. We are told that in Galatians chapter 3, 26 to 27. You put on Christ when you were immersed into Christ. I also learned that my sonship was virtue of adoption. By adoption. That when God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to purchase me, to save a person like me, a sinner, and believing in his son, I received adoption, a son. In Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 and 5. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive what? Adoption as sons. So by being adopted into the family of God, I can now call God my father. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Romans 8, 15. And one of the good news that I've learned in studying the scripture at a young age was that being a son of God, I became heir of God. Isn't that wonderful? You and I, we became heir of God and co-heirs of Jesus Christ. And if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. Isn't that wonderful? I learned, it breaks my heart that I learned that I was not a son of God. But I thank God because I've learned that I can be a son of God through faith, real faith, obedient faith in Jesus Christ that subjects myself to the command of God to be immersed in water, to be baptized in water for the forgiveness of my sins because in baptism I put on Christ. Without putting on Christ, I can never be a new creature. It is only by putting on Christ that I can be a saved individual. And by putting on Christ, I was adopted into the family of God. And how wonderful is that? And being in the family of God, I became heirs of God, just like you and I, and co-heirs of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen to that, brothers and sisters. Amen to that. Amen to that. You see, the song tells us we are heir of salvation and purchase of God. I became heir because I was purchased by God. You became heir because you were purchased by God. I learned growing up that I need to be born again, not by flesh, but by spirit. I learned when I was studying the scripture, when I learned about Nicodemus and Jesus Christ conversing with each other. Jesus told Nicodemus, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. And Jesus made it clear to Nicodemus that he wasn't talking about physical birth but he was talking about a spiritual birth. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is a spirit. Now by virtue of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, by the shedding of his blood, our sins have been forgiven. Our sins have been washed away. Ephesians chapter one, verse seven. Verse seven. In him we have redemption, through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his glory. And therefore, we are born of his spirit, washed in his blood. When I found the Lord at an early age, 
I found out that I was a sinner. I found out that I'm not the son of God. And that I would go to hell if I die with my sins. And therefore I submitted myself to God. I submitted myself to Him. And in doing so, I found a great joy. I found real joy. You know, I don't know everything, and I don't understand everything, but I, I try to learn as much as this small brain of mine can hold and can accommodate. And I thank God that I am still learning every day, just like yesterday. We had a wonderful uh, Bible study with Brother Joe and Brother Ryan at McDonald. You, know, you can join us there if you want to. Um, lots of learnings. I told them, you know, and this is what is good about fellowship. You learn, we learn from each other. You learn from me, I learn from you, I learn from him. And we never stop learning. And I thank God for that because every day I keep on learning and learning new things. And I know that in heaven, that is where our perfect delight would be. Perfect submission, perfect delight. I learned that one day when my life is over, when I am, or when I am still alive, when my Lord and Savior comes back, 1 Thessalonians 4 tells us, I will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. You know, my spiritual journey was not all that smooth sailing. No, not all that smooth sailing. Uh, there was a time the devil caught up with me. Mm -hmm. The devil caught up with me and he got me real good. <laughs> At first, I struggled, you know, I struggled. But being, being restrained by, uh, by a much stronger force, you know, I ended up giving up because I was too weak to fight. Have you ever experienced that when somebody is restraining you and you're trying to, you try to free yourself, but you cannot? And then with all your, your mind, with all your strength, it's all gone and you're too weak to fight anymore. I was like that. You know, the force that's embracing me are too much for me to, to get free. So I became weak and I became one with the devil. And I'm not ashamed to accept, to, to, to tell you that because that's, that's me. You know? I became one with the devil. I was back where I was in the beginning. Oh boy, <laughs> I was back there. And then uh, after many years of uh, hiding from God, then one night, one night, the Lord found his way back to me. Thank God. The Lord found his way back to me. And I remember that night, um, I took this um, facial steamer. I had that for many years. I won that in in our company, Raffle, Raffle Group. For so many years, I had that. And uh, one night, when I was looking at all my stuff, I saw that and I took it out. Let me try this. That was 12 midnight. <laughs> Let me try this. So I put some water and then started steam coming out. So I put my face in the steamer. And then I removed my head because it was hot. Then I put it back and then sweat coming out. All of a sudden, tears coming out. Tears. Why? Why? God had me remembered about hell. And I was crying because I remembered the learnings I have with hell. Because in hell, it is an eternal torment. You cannot go out and take a rest. You cannot go out 
and look for an air conditioned room. You know, you can't. It's forever. So I was crying. I was crying. And I thank the Lord for that. And I knelt down and I remember my son the following morning he approached me dad I saw you last night you're kneeling are you sleeping or are you, or are you doing something or what are you doing I told my son I was praying I was praying and I thank God for that because he found his way back into my life you know the message of mercy love forgiveness it echoed through that silent night instead of scorn instead of irrelevance instead of condemnation i felt god's warm and i felt the embrace of god that night <clears throat> angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy whispers of love one thing I learned in my spiritual struggle against the devil, and this I really want all of us to, to listen and focus on. You see, I cannot win that fight unless the strongest ally was with me. And that is Jesus Christ. And I remembered in Mark chapter 3, 27, let me illustrate this further. Who is powerful enough to enter the house of a strong man and plunder his good? The strong man here is the devil. Only someone even stronger, referring to Jesus himself. Someone who could tie him up and plunder his house. So the goods that are that's mentioned here are those souls under the uh, under Satan's rule. And I was one of those goods during that time i was under satan's rule and i needed somebody stronger to free me to free me from my slavery from the shackles of sin that i was into and i needed jesus christ at that time i thought i was fighting i was resisting but i wasn't not i wasn't because at that time i was fighting through my own effort Jesus was not with me. I did not ask God to help me. I did not pray to God to help me. So from the get-go, I was going down the drain. So I needed Jesus Christ. And here's the lesson, my dear brethren and friends. If you are being tempted, like what I said in our Bible study, deal with your temptation at your thought level. Deal it immediately. And when you want to deal it, you come to God in prayer. Because you cannot do it alone. Been there, done that, and I lost. You need a stronger man. You need a stronger being. You need Jesus Christ to tie up this strong man, to tie up Satan so that he could free you. When I was struggling with my sins, I never called upon God. I was trying it on my own. That's why I failed. So deal with your temptation and deal it with God. With God. You cannot do it alone. Now that I am back with God, yes, Satan is still, you know, trying to sneak in once in a while. If he can get through. <laughs> if he can get through. Now he's trying all his tricks under his sleeves, you know, to get hold of me again and to get hold of you, you know. But in full submission to God and with intentional living, everything is under control with God and all is at rest. Now that I'm back with God, yes, there are still challenges. There are still trials. There are still sufferings. And it's one of those realities in life that we cannot really get rid of. Whether you have God or not, there will be suffering. There will be challenges, no matter what, you know. But the big difference is now that I have God is that I am happier. I can put a smile amid the difficulties. I am more fulfilled and I am more satisfied in life. 
because I have God. And that's the difference between having God and not having God. You see, what is there to complain when you have God? What is there to complain when you have Jesus in your life? What is there to complain when you have the great provider by your side? Amen. And uh, I always say that I'm always blessed with the best. If only Brother Tony would be here, he would say that also. Blessed with the best. <laughs> I, in my Savior, am happy and blessed. See, in our Savior's side, we are happy and we are blessed. You know, every day I'm excited. Every day I'm excited because I'm excited to share the gospel. Every day I'm excited uh, to see what the Lord has in store for me. I don't know uh, what are those things, but maybe, just maybe, I will meet somebody, you know, and uh, share the gospel, and that somebody would come to know Jesus Christ. You know, that's why I'm excited every day to go out. Because when I go out, I usually talk to strangers. I usually talk to people. Even if they don't, they don't want to talk to me, then I would approach them again. You never know. You never know. Because the next soul that might listen to the message of salvation that you are telling them might be that might be someone that you love. You never know. You never know. I'm excited every day because that's part of the Great Commission. Not only me, but the Great Commission was also given to you. So we must be excited every day. When we wake up every day, we must, we must be excited to share the gospel in our workplace, in our school. The Great Commission was given to all of us. Right now, standing before you, I don't know when the Lord will call me home. Nobody here knows either. You don't know when the Lord will call you home. But between now and that time, let us do what we are called to do while we are waiting for him. Be dressed for service and keep your lamps burning. Then you will be like servants waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that when he comes and knocks, they can open the door for, for him at once. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds on watch when he returns. That is watching and waiting, looking above. As we watch and as we wait, as we look above, let us be dressed for our service to the Lord. Because we don't know when our time will be up. The question is, now will I ever exchange God again, you know, for the last of the flesh, last of the eyes and pride of life? My answer is no. I'm good. <laughs> I'm all good with God. I have everything I needed. I have everything that I needed. Remember the question that I asked a couple of uh, Sundays ago. Think of something that you don't have, that you think you need to survive one day at a time. Do you remember that? Think of something that you need that you don't have, that you need to survive one day at a time. None. Because God has given us everything that we need. And that should teach us an important lesson that God indeed blessed us beyond measure. Beyond measure. And we are filled with His goodness and love day in and day out. Now it was said that the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Now, in my case, I found myself losing it for God because of his love. In Matthew 16, 25, for whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. We are filled with his goodness and we are lost in his love. I am very, very happy I was able to influence my family 
my children and you know seeing them serving God the best that they can I'm very happy my eldest he is serving uh, giving all his best as a minister at the Lord's Church back home I can never be I can never be happier and prouder than that as a father seeing your son preaching and sharing Jesus Christ so I'm, 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 I'm so thankful to God for that now in less than an hour I presented to you my 50 years of existence <laughs> this is my story and uh, my song is to continue declaring his gospel and the message of love of salvation how my life will end by God's grace and mercy I will continue praising my Savior all the day long until God calls me home now friends and brethren what is your story what is your story I want to encourage you to let your story of transformation be known because the best testimony is our lives testimony your transformation why are you a Christian why are you a servant of God that is the best testimony other person could listen to they would believe the gospel message of salvation that you are bringing to them because they see in you a real transformed individual who embraced that gospel that you are sharing with them. They would believe the gospel that you are sharing with them because you exemplify that gospel. So again, my dear brothers and sisters, what is your story? Let your story be known. Let your story encourage one another. Let your story transform other people's lives. Because your story is a story of transformation. Your story is a story of love, mercy by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And if you are still lost at this very moment, God is waiting for you. I encourage you. And I, and I plead with you, God is knocking at the doors of your heart right now. And I want you to listen with your heart. Don't listen with your ears. Listen with the emotions of your heart. Feel the gospel message of love by God to you. And I want you to don't delay. Why take chances? Why take chances when you could have a blessed assurance amen why put your chances on something that you don't really know put your life to God blessed assurance and my question is what are you waiting for come now come without delay and accept Jesus Christ right this very moment now may I encourage all of you as we stand up to sing the Lord uh, invitation song and for those who wanted to accept the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ please come forward and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior good morning God bless us all